What's good everyone, it's John MD Mills here and welcome back to my channel. Thank you again for watching and just generally being great and being yourselves. Love it. Yeah, so uh, this book review of this month of What John Read, for February I'm mainly going to focus on three books. Uh, one philosophical, one non-fiction autobiographical in that respect, and a fiction book. Um, but yeah, first off, thank you to everyone who has listened and supported my new single, 23, which came out at the back end of last month. The reviews have been great, honestly. Thank you so much for the support. Feel free to listen to it if you haven't. Uh, buy it. It's on iTunes. Might as well if you like it that much. But yeah, first things first. Let's do the philosophical work. And that was a book by Lev Shestov. It's called Athens in Jerusalem. And it was retranslated and reprinted for the first time in English in about 50 years at the back end of last year. And I had to just read it because of that. Lev Shostov is a little known philosopher in Europe, but he massively influenced Albert Camus. So if you're into anything to do with, you know, the existential movement or just continental philosophy of the 20th century, like I am, he's a guy to kind of stop by at because of his massive influence on Camus and his view of the absurd, which obviously was borrowed in from Kierkegaard. But yeah, Lev Shostov, the Athens and Jerusalem, his general premise is this idea of audacity, right? It's the idea of audacity. Athens representing rationality and, um, you know, using the mind, logic, etc, etc. And the claims of Jerusalem, which is God has spoken, divine revelation. And he basically is analysing the West and saying that Western culture is just caught up in this battle between Athens and Jerusalem, where you are being rational and you are also battling this idea of divine. When you are so much focused on rationalism, you end up in despair and anguish. Whereas you then have to have the audacity, here's the key term, the audacity to then reject your own rationality and believe in the divine revelation. And he says that basically Western culture will never actually be um, set. It will always be stagnant and all over the place as long as it keeps rejecting Jerusalem in his idea anyway. But that massively influenced Camus and his view of the absurd because obviously he swung more to the rational side. But yeah, great read if you're into that kind of stuff, like I am, because clearly I'm talking so excited about it. But yeah, because I'm a nerd. Um, but yeah, left chef stuff, hardly known in Europe for some reason. He's not really taught, so that alone piqued my interest, so I had to go read him because of that. Second, it was a book by James Baldwin, No Name in the Street. I Okay, anyone that knows me, I love James Baldwin, like, hands down. He's just an amazing writer, he's a master of the English language, and when I read him, I feel like I'm sitting down with him having a coffee. And what I'm reading is like he's communicating to me directly face to face. And No Name in the Street is just very autobiographical. It's a tale of basically himself growing up and his travels through Europe. So when he moved to France for a bit and just him detailing his experience of how he was being a black man in America in the 40s and 50s growing up and his transition to actually just being a man from America and just a black man, a black person in Europe and just detailing, and the, it's, it's fascinating just seeing his thought process change as he experiences more of the world, and just that it helped him actually understand what he could do then when he went back to America to actually help the African American people um, in their struggle for civil rights, which obviously is still ongoing today. But um, Baldwin, I just love the guy, I love the way he writes, I love what he represents, and he's, he's thinking he's always so clear and concise, and yet it seems as if he's speaking to you directly from his heart as well, from his mind. And that is just something that I find very unique and beautiful that if writers are able to do that. Um, so yeah, James Ball with No Name in the Street. Recommend that to absolutely everyone if you're into that kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, finally, The Sellout. Paul Beatty, Man Booker Prize winner last year. Yeah, read the damn thing. Read the book. Honestly, just read the book. They're writing it off as satire because they don't want to deal with it, but it's an amazing tale, the cultural references and just the random tidbits of knowledge that are just throughout the whole book. It is very well written if you're into a satirical style. It is somewhat satirical, I will admit, but it's not Mark Twain. It does have double meanings, deeper undertones. There are concepts that he's dealing with which make you just go, ah, I see what you're trying to do there. And it's just him pointing at the, it's pointing at the white establishment basically, just being there like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. just looking at racism like that. And it's, 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 it's funny. It's blatant, it's, con it's confronting, and he puts it all in your face that someone who doesn't want to deal with it will just label it as satire when it's so much more than that. So I'd recommend absolutely everyone to read it because there's so much depth to it that just, it, it leaves you, when you finish it, it leaves you thinking about it and dwelling on it and just, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Go read that, Paul Beatty, 
the sellout, it is worth the rave reviews. Absolutely, absolutely recommend from me. And yeah, finally, I am running a 10K at the end of May for Orchid Cancer Research, which is a charity um, dedicated to men's cancer, um, looking at, you know, mainly testicular cancer and penile cancer, etc. So yeah, I will be running at the end of May 10 kilometers, which should be fun. I start training for it next week. Yeah, so um, I'm going to put the link at the bottom. Feel free to donate if you wish. Um, I've got a minimum target, but that's besides the point. It's for charity at the end of the day. And yeah, it's it's deep because men don't like to talk about when they're suffering. And if you get cancer downstairs, then yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back next month when I give you more updates about some of the stuff that I am reading. And thank you again for all the support. Please subscribe. John MD Mills.